afternoon, good afternoon everybody. Um, so this session will showcase the town centre uh, regeneration projects in Grimsby which have been completed as part of the town's heritage action zone and part of the cultural development fund sponsored Grimsby Creates programme, all, day, all aimed at renewing local pride and reactivating the town centre. So as Stella mentioned, uh, Grimsby um, has a heritage action zone and St James Square is positioned in the southwestern corner of that heritage action, action zone. The public space has a mixed uh, land ownership position between the Church of England and North East Lancashire Council. And so, since the public space was opened in 1971, along with St James House and St James Hotel, the area has been subs subsequently landscaped back in the late 90s. Um, there was archaeological services employed then to investigate the proposed development um, and there was trenches that were um, put in place to look at the area of the churchyard because the, the site had previously been a burial ground and a um, graveyard. Um, but there weren't any early deposits disturbed so they concluded that landscaping could take place. Um, so 25 years ago, that was kind of it. That was what happened. It was very traditional from an archaeological perspective. Um, but fast forward to 2020, which is when the council determined that the square was to be gener regenerated, to open the space and to create a welcoming place in the heart of the town centre that accentuates the splendour of Grimsby Minster. So alongside the hard landscaping that was mostly funded by a Humber Local Enterprise Partnership Grant, the council was also successful in being awarded a cultural development fund in early 2019. And so part of that grant was to contribute to the square being utilised as an event space with the associated service requirements that would be needed as well as the installation of public art. And through an open tender process, our big picture in arts and heritage organisation in Grimsby were appointed to lead the Public Art Commission. And this then resulted in two further artists, Adrian Riley and Annabelle McCourt, being engaged on the programme to deliver their concepts through to design and installation. Um, and it, it's this part of it that I'll focus on in this section of the presentation. So Adrian presented a concept of capturing the town's social history with etched words and phrases through one of the spokes of the newly laid paving. And consultation and engagement with community groups and residents took place largely through the COVID pandemic. Um, so that was quite a challenge in itself. So Adrian sought stories, memories, records of Grimsby's heritage, as well as research in the range of typeface that's been used around the town. And the path was installed last spring and reopened to the public in late May last year. So what does it look like? So Paula from Our Big Picture and Adrian from Electric Angel, who you can see on the right there, uh, worked to create that record in an engaging yet informative way. So the paving content isn't necessarily detailed, nor is there an interpretation board in the square. And there was much discussion about the need for such a board. And if we'd progressed with it, we felt that we'd wanted to make it as accessible as possible. Um, there is a guide, however, um, which um, is, is there, um, available for Grimsby Minster, that sort of unpacks and explores the path in much more detail and allows the reader to think about their connection to Grimsby and their memories associated with the heritage of the town. So looking at the path in, in some detail, here we explore some of the detail of Grimsby's heritage and origins and the heritage of the town in particular with some key dates in the rise of Grimsby, which is shown in a hopscotch format. So we wanted this to be kind of a playful and fun way of um, providing access to heritage so that residents would see their history and reinvigorate civic pride. So the six in the hopscotch shows uh, the settlement at Grimsby was mentioned in the Doomsday Survey of, eight, of 10, six, 1086, confirming its origins in the Saxon period. And at the time, there was recorded a population of only 200, a priest, a mill and a ferry. And that um, terminology continues today as there is a cafe in the nearby market which shares its name with that description. So Grimsby also had the largest fishing fleet in the 1950s, it's probably what it's most famous for. Um, and the alphabetical list in the path represents the ship's manifest and the historical accounts of goods that were carried through um, Grimsby docks. And they, they're shown on both the left and the right hand side of the screen. And there's a further development of the interpretation of the Come Follow Me etch paving um, by the two artists in a unique audio format. 
So that will be available on um, the Council's Discover NEL website for residents and visitors to explore and understand more about the artwork and thus the heritage and archaeology in the square. So in terms of um, just delving a bit more detailed into Grimsby's social history and archaeological value, um, so service, those services were engaged on the project to review the old churchyard and to ensure that the project did not disturb significant deposits during the refurbishment. So the service provides a visitor site at various times to consider the monitor and to consider and monitor record the changes being made. So as I've already previously mentioned, it was used as a churchyard. It's likely to contain graves and remains. And in fact, in the 1997 investigation, a grave slab was unearthed in one of the trenches. So in, in 2020, um, the archaeological monitoring and recording that was commissioned was implemented to identify and recover any artefacts and buried features, as well as um, recover any disturbed human remains for reburial elsewhere within the churchyard. And once that information was shared within the wider project team, and particularly with, those, uh, with the artists, Adrian looked at this and utilised those findings in a unique and innovative way. So making reference to the past and to the heritage underneath people's feet, um, as well as that above ground, the paving becomes a public account of Grimsby's heritage prefer preserved for future generations. So here we see the greatest impact of the value of archaeology in Grimsby Town Centre, with excerpts of our past littered throughout the path. So first, um, on the top left, we see reference to Augustine, Olaf, Mary and James, which refers to the previous church names in the vicinity of Grimsby Minster and where the square name originates as the parish church of St. James um, prior to the minister status was ordered it, awarded in 2010. I've already mentioned the ship's um, manifest that's listed alphabetically. It gives rise to many of the goods, uh, stories of goods and people that came into or ex exited through the docks. And some of those remain present in the cargo today. And some are more recent technological advances with the town's green energy platform firmly in place. One aspect of the ship's manifest relates to the advent of the railways and sleepers were brought into the docks for use in, to connect Grimsby to the rest of the country. Within this context, sleepers is also indicated with a footnote, which is the top right hand picture, that states tread softly, making a subtle reference to the previous incarnation as a churchyard and burial ground for many centuries. It is this attention to detail inclusion of all creative and heritage professional input that's created a legacy and documented the history in a novel way that is accessible and visible 24-7. The more recent monitoring and rec recording scheme identified an earlier church wall as well, um, likely to be medieval, situated in front of the, the current minister's north door. So again, Adrian decided to reference this in the path as close as possible to the site, although allowing the visitor to pace their own 20 steps to the Saxon wall in the inscription, and that's bottom left. So this is what the uh, square now looks like, so the, the landscape. Um, the pictures perhaps don't um, show this justice, um, because regenerating the squares I've sort of mentioned was challenging in many ways. The access and egress of the site, the other nearby historic buildings, as well as the COVID pandemic. And there were also constraints as being highlighted in terms of the square being a churchyard and burial ground. So therefore, um, the, the square isn't quite level. Um, and that's something that we can explain and expand upon in the narrative about the square as well. So what do we use it for? So part of the reason was to open up the possibilities of utilising the space differently, as well as reinstalling civic pride. But ha that has to be balanced between um, the needs of the Church of England, being a jo jointly owned space, and the previous history of the square. So each activity is reviewed to ensure it reflects the space and its surroundings. And on the screen is a, is a variety of the events that have taken place, um, funded by Grimsley Creates, since it was officially opened last year. So we've had a second piece of artwork, which is on a wall, which isn't on the screen, um, that, was, that was launched last year. We've had Christmas events. We had the Museum of the Moon in Grimsby Minster. Um, there was a Welcome Back Fund event called Love Grimsby to celebrate our pride in the town. And we also had a Grimsby Creates Noise uh, Festival celebrating music, dance and art. So still a wide variety of creative activity taking place, as well as a pancake race um, 
that was um, had previously held in the square and is inscribed in the square path as well uh, between the mayor and the mayor's chaplain. And feedback from the surveys that have been undertaken following those events indicate that the festivals are enabling people to feel prouder of their town as well as in it, and introducing new audiences to arts, culture and heritage of Grimsby. So as you um, might appreciate, being in the, um, in the East, Grimsby was founded by the Danes in the 9th century. And some of that has been brought through into the path and into um, other aspects within the town. So on the left of your picture, you can see um, the origins of Grim. So it comes from Grim um, to Grimmer to uh, Grim, Grimsby, and uh, now Grimsby. Um, So in the Historic England Places panel 2020, um, they stated that there is huge potential for the town's Danish origins to ex be explored as part of placemaking, and the panel welcomed the enthusiasm for Grimsby's archaeological significance to play a role in this. So you can see there on the right, um, one of the um, artists engaged in delivering activity for Festival of the Sea were a duo who provide entertainment of, as Vikings. A um, bit of a fun take on things, but um, a way of celebrating our history. Um, and it's, it's true that we need to kind of engage audiences in a different way to be uh, quite effective, um, because our, we've, we have low um, engagement in arts, culture and heritage, um, which has been as low as 32.5% in the past few years. Um, and there's been awards from a Heritage Starter Fund to explore the potential staging of a Viking festival in Grimsby Town Centre in the future. So the project team are researching this opportunity. They're engaging with the Grimsby and Cleethorpe Civic Society, who are cited um, on the archaeological significance of connecting with Grimsby's founders in an arch artistic way. So our haven. So the village of Grimsby grew into a port because it stands on a river. Um, it's a natural tidal in inlet called the haven. Um, and part of the project um, name was called our haven. Um, so local legend is it that Grimsby was founded by a Norse settler who used his boat timbers to build his house on the banks of the haven where a small Saxon community already lived. It flourished in the medieval period um, with the natural haven allowing for the sea ves faring vessels of traders um, to continue to dock and trade along the east coast. So you can see there on the slide that there is a, the right hand picture is sort of architect, uh, 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 architect's impressions of um, what the uh, town could look like could, with the Grimsby Master Plan um, and also referenced in the path to Denmark being 528 miles away as the crow flies or as the raven flies. So another aspect of the town um, was, is Garth Lane and the water and connecting to the waterfront. So this connects um, across a, a now uh, refurbished bridge. And the paving design that you can see on, um, on the slide in front of you shows the new industry that's been developed in Grimsby and the Humber with a wind turbine depicted on the floor. But then upon closer inspection, there are several... Um, several discs in the centre of those um, wind turbines that link to the Great Grimsby Seal as well as Collinson Shipyard build, boat builders who are a major part of Grimsby's rich industrial heritage. And there are also several wood carvings which were created from a large willow tree that had to be removed and indicates the natural heritage of the town and its surrounding waterways. Whilst developing that site, um, these big... Um, Boulders were found, which we think were being used to um, use for moorings for boats. So um, we um, decided that they could be used in a very different way. Um, and so they are now, they've now been recited. Um, the water is just to the left of, um, of them after the path. Um, but they are now used as hostile vehicle mitigation. Um, and, and the anti-terrorism unit of Humberside Police were uh, happy to approve that as being suitable for that purpose. So repurposing something that has been um, used in an alternative way um, for something that's needed in the modern world. Um, and finally, um, there's a project happening in Riverhead Square. 
Um, so there's lots of public realm activity happening in Grimsby Town Centre, as you can appreciate, um, which kind of connects Garth Lane to St James Square and Victoria Street, the High Street. Um, there was some um, work undertaken in uh, 2020 and early last year as well, um, part of phase one work, um, and there was some um, research undertaken by our, by our big picture to look at the heritage of, Cent of Riverhead Square um, and look at how that public art work could be installed on lighting columns in Grimsby Town Centre. Um, and these jugs um, and fragments of jugs that you can see on the screen were found in a, in a previous excavation back in the late um, 80s. Um, and it just shows sort of the, the aspect of potentially using um, that w which was found um, back in the 80s in new designs for lighting columns. We didn't actually go ahead with um, pursuing that um, on the lighting columns, partly because we felt it might be a bit too much like Halloween every night for some people, and the lighting, the lighting columns have been consistently applied across um, the public realm that have been developed, so we didn't want to kind of veer too much and wanted to create that consistency. Um, but our intention and those of the artists were to include them in the design. So we have got to find a way of utilising this find with public art in Riverhead Square. <laughs> 